So Hatha Yoga, as we are teaching, this is not happening now, this has happened for millennia in this form. This is a lineage where nobody left a signature on the yoga. I think what makes this program different and unique from any other program is that the asanas here are very much a live process. It's a classical hatha yoga and so I'm noticing that every day it's something that's living within you, that's something that is growing, it's something that's evolving within you. So all of the asanas, the postures are done with eyes closed and that makes the world of the difference. It's not a performance anymore, it's the fact that we close our eyes during most of the postures makes it so that it's much more of an inward process. So what makes something classical is, one thing is the period of its existence, which definitely all yoga has. In a specific form, if it has existed for a period, and another thing for a language is that it must have a substantial body of literature. That is, it is not just people are speaking it, many people have written many things about it, explored various dimensions of life using that language. There is a substantial body of literature and it has existed for a sufficient amount of time where you really can't pin the exact date when it started. The Hatha Yoga, as we are teaching, this is not happening now, this has happened for millennia in this form. Because the significance of this lineage is, this is a lineage which clearly understands we are dumb idiots. When you know you are a dumb idiot, you will not try to change anything. That's the significance of being stupid. Hello? When you think you're stupid, you don't think you will have to innovate, isn't it? People who think they are smart, they always have to make something of their own, they have to leave a signature. So this is a lineage where nobody left a signature on the yoga. I even feel within myself, I shouldn't tell you this, but now you asked, I'm telling you, I don't feel right to even call it Isha classical Hatha Yoga. Within me, it's not okay. Classical Hatha Yoga, that's all it is. Isha is added because today's world functions with brand and you must understand, the brand of Isha has been built with blood and sweat. Classical Hatha Yoga, that's all. Because no frills, no addition from us, just the way it was and its potential is limitless. Here it sits, we can codify it in many ways, we can teach it to you, we can put it in the form of energy, we can make it in so many ways. So in this context, yoga, the application of yoga is limitless. So it has a body and its age is also quite timeless, at least in human perspective. So that qualifies for classical Hatha Yoga. It's taught in a really traditional way, like you know the guru pools in India, it's like that. It's not like a school or a college or a university, though it's uh, international, people from all over the world come here. But still, the sanctity of the process, the sacredness of the process and, uh, you know, tradition in which it has to be taught, that is maintained. And that's what makes a whole lot of difference here. During the session, before any new asana, we watch a demonstration of the posture that shows the smallest details of how we are supposed to do the asana, um, how to stand, how your body alignment should be and even how your fingers should be. We went through two types of practice correction. The first one was a partner correction. Um, each one of us joins uh, with a partner and correct the postures for each other. Uh, the good thing here is that I'm able to see other participants' mistakes and relate them to my mistakes too. By watching others, I can understand those in small details. Uh, the second type of practice correction is one-on-one -on -one practice corrections uh, with the teachers. I discovered that there are many mistakes I didn't realize I was doing and now I'm paying much more attention to how I do the asana.
One thing that uh, I've been noticing, we've, we're doing um, a process called visualization. It's really about to um, train the mind uh, to visualize the posture we get in. So we not only use and develop the body, uh, but we also uh, start using the mind as well. So we just close our eyes and visualize it um, so that you can really train and, and use the mind uh, to the full extent. Uh, yoga was booming all around and I was drawn to it was mainly because of the psychological balance as well as the physical benefits that you get from it but I didn't have a proper source so I, uh, I did some YouTube yoga it was some postures and the explanations on how to do it it was so not working out I used to just copy the move with music running in the background I can't even imagine doing such a thing right now. There was no focus on the breath. So I did that for a few months, injured my uh, right shoulder. And obviously I had to stop it. I had no idea I would be introduced to this place where they have so much depth to everything. We are asked to put focus on every single movement coordinated with the breath. At first I was like, uh, Oh, this hurts, that hurts, my, my stomach hurts. Every day I actually want to do more of it so that I can uh, break that limitation of, you know, that resistance that I have towards sadhana. Every day I wake up thinking, um, yeah, let's push yourself a little more, a little more, and maybe we'll get there uh, a little quicker. So yeah, and I can't wait to lose some more weight, man. This This is like... It's dragging me down a little bit, so I'm gonna be out there, but the body is a limitation, so I'll work on it more. I'm not only learning Hatha Yoga, actually I'm learning a new way of life and learning the ideal way of becoming a Hatha Yoga teacher. And I'm also becoming more aware of unconscious patterns of my life. Everything in the program is very precise and I'm looking forward to, to learn more uh, from Isha.